right, y'all, let's get into this real quick. I only got about maybe 15, 20 minutes to really rock, rock out, okay? So let's talk. Fellas, never underestimate the devil's ability to use a female as a vessel for her to disrespect the God within you. Never, ever, fellas, underestimate the devil's ability to use a female, especially a modern female, as a vessel so he can disrespect the inner godliness of you. So you got to understand something. When you had a Ruach Kodesh, the El Hokadesh, in the name of Yahuwah Barshem Yahushua, and Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shai, Eli, Eli, Adonai, El Yeshua, Tai, El Shaddai. Okay, these are names for the Most High. And the Son, okay, Yahshua Hermajiak. All right, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh. When you have that in you, you are a direct descendant of God, especially as a genetic Jew like Ronnie Tu, running from the tribe of Judah, supernatural Negroes, ancient Hebrews, spiritually and genetically. When you have that genetic supernatural gift, the devil uses many vessels to manipulate you to cast sorcery, witchcraft, warlockism, uh, lower vibrational uh, Baphomet practices, and all kinds of practices against you spiritually. Okay, it's all about taking your self-esteem. Okay, it's all about taking your confidence away from you. Because if somebody could take your self-esteem and confidence away from you, they can take you away from earth. You understand this? If somebody could take your confidence and self-esteem away from you, they could take you away from you to the point where you're so depressed, you'll want to self-delete. And I'm going to let that breathe. Matter of fact, let's take a moment of silence for that Ronnie Tuism truth right there. That's a Gorilla Biscuit. So, rewind that back a few times. That was deep. So, don't deal with the type of females that try to change you into somebody else. Number one. Number two is big. Don't deal with the type of female who ever gives you slights and undermines you in any way, shape, or form, even playfully. Don't ever start a relationship from a playful hood confrontation. And what do I mean by that? A negative conversation is what I mean by that. A bitch who was flirting with Satan is what I mean by that. There is a lot of women, especially in our own community, the, the, the Yahudian community, which is the black, the so-called black community. A lot of our women feel like if a man is confident and they feel he's even a little cocky, even if he's introverted, quiet and a sigma male, a self, uh, a man who is self-absorbed to a certain degree, a man who is in his own little world. A lot of times they use that as a benchmark to harass and even um, quietly, socially, I mean, excuse me, not quietly but socially and passively bully that man. For real. Like a lot of black men are bullied by a lot of our modern black women. How You might say, Ronnie, come on, man, that sounds soft and sensitive. Buck up, bro. You don't understand what the fuck I'm talking about. A lot of black men are socially bullied in their households when they're coming up from their from big mama culture, their, their mamas, grandmamas, aunties, sisters. It's normalized abuse in our black community towards black men. And it came from Zaddy's Massa Plantation in 1706. Is where it really, really heated up and started, okay? It's, this goes way back, okay? Real talk. Another thing. Well, our women are very, very insecure to the point where it's dangerous levels of insecurity. Anytime you see a woman wearing a George Washington wig, a hairpiece from another culture, and it's looking toxic and vulturous, and you have to understand something. The na in nature, poisonous, venomous frogs have orange... And, and, and lime green uh, colors to show their toxicity. It's the same thing in human nature where somebody's got all of these piercings and these tattoos and all of these really weird hairdos and wigs and shit. What it's saying is I'm going to force you to look at me because I wasn't looked at in a, in a appealing manner coming up. That's what that's saying subliminally. And what I noticed is that a lot of those women who act like that are like criminally insane. Um, look, I'm serious. Like, and we've all worked with a couple of those type, or work actively or been around those types, right? Who um, they feel like if you don't go out of your way to speak to them, and I'm not saying you don't speak at all, but I'm saying if you don't go out your way to speak to them, they like to ruin and destroy your reputation. Because like I told you, a lot of these women are working with Satan. They feel like they're going to get your 
conversation, your energy, your attention, and sometimes even your resources by any means necessary. And I don't mean that in a Malcolm X type of way of positivity or revolutionary way. I mean that in a hellacious Luciferian way is what they feel like. They'll slander your name. They'll tell people you're anything except the son of God. I'm telling you. Okay. And a lot of brothers secretly go through that where they don't know why certain females randomly, especially in the black community, are always gossiping tea and slandering the man's name. Making up shit, telling people that a masculine black man is a rainbow uh, character. All, they do all kind of character slander, defamation, and uh, assassination of a black man's character and image, right? Um, and it's deep because it goes back to their own insecurities. They feel like anybody that makes them feel a sense of internal rejection, like say for instance, this is the reflection. Say you walk around a group of black women, and only my realest brothers know what I'm talking about. If you take care of yourself, you if you're a dark-skinned black man and you take care of yourself, and you walk around a group of black women in any environment, usually they're gonna start slandering you and talking shit about you, just like you're on a slave auction block, just like Zaddy and Massa and them used to do. That's how they're. That's who trained them to do that. By the way, they'll start like sizing you up, like you a little fucking object. You know what I'm saying? You a big ass grown man, but they'll they'll have this this buckaroo attitude towards you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, and let me describe it in an edified way. Let me turn the beat down a little bit. It's an epic classic beat, by the way. Roger your zap? Computer love. But anyway, you know, my, you know, I'm an 80s, I'm an 80s person now. I'm from the, I'm, I'm, I'm from the 80s, kind of like the Kid Poe was, but I'm an 80s guy, so I, I listen to old school shit. I don't listen to this drill demon, drill devil, uh, destroy uh, us culture type shit. I don't listen to that. But anyway, back you ain't gonna hear me rocking no Dirk and no no drill idiots and shit from my city or none of that. But anyway, but back to it, to this right. So when you walk past a group of black women, oftentimes in general, they are either gonna do one or two things. They're gonna either be stuck up and look down on you, or they're gonna slander and defame your character and gossip about you if you are a confident, quiet, masculine, introverted black man, because they take intro introversion. Is, is like a like in their mind. This is not what I am saying. This is what how they take it. Their perception, not mine. You gotta look at the perception of fools in life. I always tell people, look at the perception of fools and look at the perceptions of psychological adversaries, right? In life, right? You gotta always know how other people think of of themselves and you. So if they think the worst of themselves, they want you to think the worst of yourself. So they take it as if you're a confident black buck who don't give a fuck in a spiritual judge or not, and you minding your business, but you looking fly with it, kind of like Ronnie too. You know, yours truly. Is that a bird? Is that a plane? What it do? No, that's Ronnie too. Fly guy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so if you are, if you something like me in your own zone on some fly shit all the time, they take that as a as a psychological uh, psyop. They take that as like a psychological warfare, like an internal cold war. They take that like... Who is this black nigga to think that he's something? And they got that from Zaddy and Mass and them. Uh, that comes from Willie Lynch indoctrination syndrome. That's why I always be trying to explain to y'all. That's why so many of y'all go through that shit y'all do with the black, our black community of women, right? I've been through all of that too. I still go through it in certain ways, but I'm too fly for it. It's like the, the eagle and the crow. Look up the story of the eagle and the crow and you'll understand what I mean, bro. The eagle is so fly that the crow can only reach up so high before it loses sight of the eagle. Okay, and then the, you understand, and the eagle keeps transcending and ascending upward bound on some fly shit, literally. That's why I always do this, right? It ain't just to cool myself off, you know what I'm saying? It's just that fly shit, right? Fly guy. So, anyway, um, so I want y'all to understand, and if you reflect back on your, I want you to reflect back on your life deeply. Think about the difference in how our heritage and group and community of women treat us Versus how everybody else's groups and heritage of women treat them. It's significantly, disastrously different. And that's a gorilla biscuit. They treat us like we should be accepting of being bullied by them and taking their abuse. Now, by the way, I don't advocate any violence against them. Never any violence. I don't even I don't even advocate negativity. What I advocate is the proclivity of turning your back and going silent on them, radio silent on them, and getting flyer and flyer and flyer like the great eagle and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? But don't engage with stupid. So when they talking all that shit, you just give more distance, more space, so that really, in all truth, you don't allow yourself uh, to mate, date, and procreate 
with the baby mama culture, if you get my drift, if that's what they're on. Okay, I'm not saying all of them the same. I'm saying in general. I got to speak in general, right? So this ain't no self-hating coon shit or no buffoonery and baboon and shit. In fact, the ultimate coons are the type of women I'm talking about who hate black men for being confident. You ever notice they only want the type of men that they can bully, harass, and slander? Or the type of men that don't give them resistant, resistance when they're emasculating him? It's a, it's a Willie Lynch indoctrination emasculation ritual. And that's a real spiritual gorilla biscuit in itself to think about how deep that was what I just said. That was genius in itself. Take a moment of silence for that piece of truth. That was a Ronnie Tuism, by the way. Rewind that back a few times and really get that. You know what I'm saying? You should almost feel it in your back end and your traps. Real talk. By the way, fellas, start back working out, man. Hit the weights. Even back in the day, street niggas were swole. Back in the Tookie era, Craig Munson era, you know what I'm saying? Munster Cody era, they was even swole. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, just, and I ain't even talking about being on no street shit, because I'm just saying that, because some, some guys, some of y'all out there, you know, and unfortunately in our culture, our culture, a lot of times motherfuckers was born in the streets, naturally, right? But what I'm saying is, no matter what, don't, don't be weak and emasculated and looking like little gremlins. You know what I'm saying? Start back working out and put some some size on you. Just for your pride as a masculine, self-confident man. Stop leaning on toolies and shit like that for your masculinity. You real talk. It's almost starting to look like an, an obscenity out here. How how many brothers are looking so malnourished out here? Shaking their dreads while they weigh a buck ten and buck twenty, buck thirty. And you might say, Ronnie, what that got to do with you? Why you care? I care about my community. Right? And I know... I care about the perception of the community. That's why I don't endorse drill music, even though I come from the drill city itself, literally the origin of it. I don't endorse self-destructive shit. That's things that are self-destructive to the Yahudim. And you might say, who is the Yahudim, Ronnie? The Yahudim is the true genetic Jews of the Bible who black, who black Americans really are. Those of us who are Judites, who literally have lineage that goes back to the tribe of Judah, okay? People like Ronnie too, people like many of you, all right? You just don't know it. Putin was trying to show y'all with, with that those old ancient vaults being open, uh, you know, with the scope of who black people really are biblically. We are not Hamites, Canaanites. We're not um, Africans. We're not even African-Americans. We are actually uh, Hebrews, genetically, not groups, not camps, not organizations, just genetically. It's a, that's our actual biblical heritage. Everybody has a biblical heritage, whether they like it or not or know it or not. They, they, they just do. There's no if, ands, or whoop de woos, woo hoo what, who's, with about it, period. It's just what it is. God has spoken. God has spoken. Ronnie is just a vessel, right? I'm just a vessel, an antenna to the Most High God, the El Hokadesh and Ruach Hokadesh, the Holy Spirit, right? That's all I am, just talking the truth to you. But anyway, uh, what you go through and what we go through with our community of women, it's a sad, tragic state of affairs what we go through with them with how they slander us and defame us and publicly emasculate us. But that is a satanic, demonic ritual, by the way, to emasculate God's chosen people, and cho particularly the chosen men of the community, right? That's why you see all of the rappers and all of the athletes and all of the actors for sure wearing dresses and the comedians wearing dresses. That's why you see Satan loves to destroy our masculinity. Our women love to destroy our masculinity. That's why I said it's something like an obscenity. Y'all got to start, brothers got to start resisting the temptation of dealing with the type of women who are used as vessels of Satan. The type of women that's used as vessels to the devil, you need to turn your back on them and stay gone from them and only deal with the women of the tribes that show you real love without undermining you. Y'all ain't never been somewhere and black women just start disrespecting you for no reason, bro. Like, like, they be the most obnoxious and disrespectful in all customer service environments only towards you, only towards brothers. Never towards Edo, Mites, Esau. Never towards Moabites, Asians, or nobody else. They only disrespect black men. Only, exclusively. And they don't understand when they're doing that, they're, they're actually disrespecting Jesus Christ himself. Because we are the Messiah race. And you might say, oh, that's blasphemy. How is it blasphemy? Aren't you your ancestors? How, are we, how do we not have the blood of Christ in us when he was our ancestor? That's why I still actually wear the cross. Okay, only with the black Messiah only. I don't wear it without it. Like if, I, if there's just a cross without the black Messiah on it, I don't usually wear it. 
okay? Uh, but I wear it because I know he's an ancestor, and it's a reminder to society that I know who my ancestor is. That's why you see me with the, the Black Christ medallion, okay? And no, I'm not Italian, you feel me? But anyway, um, that's just a little jokey joke. And no, I don't listen to Meg the Stallion, right? But but let's talk. Even look at what they did to Brother Tory Lanez. It's just so much deep shit in this. When you, I just want you to peel back the layers of the onion real deep. A lot of y'all don't think deep enough. Y'all not tapping into your inner genius. A lot of y'all need to really just sit back and pontificate. Real talk. Like what's really going on with our community and why they love to be self-destructive. Even our music, we're the only race of people in all of human history that make music about destroying each other. By we literally, our people are the only people in history that make music about genocide of our own culture. That's because we are genetically the Hebrews with those curses on us. Even that curse of self-hate that's written about in Deuteronomy 28 through 68. It's even written about that our women are stiff-necked people and will frown upon their 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 uh, fathers, sons, brothers, and um, brethren, it's meaning the men of their community. They frown upon us, bro. They disrespect us. It's all written. And they don't understand. They're smitten and they're smited by God when they disrespect us. They don't understand... Uh, they're not exempt from God's judgment and his, his spiritual condemnation for doing that. That's why our nation uh, of, uh, of our community is always in a, a consistent hellacious state. Because our Willie, so, uh, excuse me, look at that for you, slip of greatness. Ronnie's great even on accident at times. More times than not, what I was going to say is our women sold us out for Willie Lynch indoctrination. And, and the materialism resources from Satan. They sold us out for it. That's why they give us so much public disrespect and public uh, grievance and grief uh, and look down on us. You can you can literally go into go to a line anywhere, anywhere from Whack Arnold's to BK Have It Your Way to to goddamn anywhere, right? To to damn Papa Josh, anywhere you go, wherever you go. And there is a black customer service from a black female. I can bet my bottom dollar that the black woman will look at a line of people and she would treat the confident black man, dark skinned man the worst. No matter what. I can I can bet my bottom dollar on it. And I'm not a rich man. In fact I'm not a man with much money at all. Because it's set up for people like me to be broke financially because I'm spiritually rich. Just like Yahshua Hadamaji act the real Jesus Christ was spiritually rich, but he was financially broke. In fact, he literally lived village to village for the for the um the Bible says the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Right. So when you know this real spiritual truth, the demons of this world financially hurt you. OK, but anyway, by the way, send a donation if you can help me, you know, help out. That, that's always appreciated because I give you all the, the greatest free, free game in the world. Free jewels. My jewel, the jewels that I drop are gems uh, from the spiritual realm. I meditate deep. Y'all don't know how deep I go to, to bring these things back to y'all. You know, y'all already know I'm, I'm big on astral projections. And I even try to protect y'all spiritually so y'all can learn how to protect yourselves mentally and emotionally. And you can spirit protect yourself physically when you know how to mentally and emotionally protect yourself and esoterically protect yourself. The, your, your greatest physical protection is avoidance of evil. So you don't even have to tangle with evil. That's why we say turn your back on evil people, whoever they might be, whether they materialize in, uh, you know, any flavor. They might, whether they materialize in the flavor of Esau, whether they materialize in the flavor of Jacob, which is the black, us black people, whether they materialize as a Moabite, they can materialize as any group of people. Evil can materialize as any person, I should say. I don't want to call no group, I'm not calling groups of people evil, but any particular person can be evil at different times if they're following satanic agendas and they're given satanic energy. And all I say is, is peacefully be harmonious. And turn your back. Be harmonious with God in the universe, but turn your back on wicked. You don't have to explain yourself when you're quiet and turning your back on wicked. And do your imprecation prayers. A lot of y'all didn't watch that video the other day because it went over a lot of y'all head and it scared a lot of y'all. But when I did that video about imprecation prayers, a lot of y'all mistake it, mistook that with the word impregnation about getting bitches pregnant, and that's what what it was, was not what it was about. It was about imprecation which means adversarial prayers of the bible what king david was doing in the bible all the time david did a lot of imprecation prayers he was worse than me 
right? And not worse, but I mean that in a figure of speech, like a cool way. Like he was more serious to me about implication prayers, which mean curses against thy enemies. You know, uh, you stay away from them, you turn your back on them. But when you have to be engaged around uh, satanic, demonic, uh, skin walking, um, um, empty vessel, reprobate spirits, you want to connect to the most high God to a certain degree that so they can hear it. You want to start saying things like Yahuwah Barashem Yahushua, Yahweh Barashem Yahweh Shai, Eli Eli Adonai El Yeshua Tai El Shaddai, Barashem Hermajiyak Yahweh Shai, Barashem Hermajiyak Yahuwah Barashem Yahushua. Amen. Right? These are these are ways where you're calling out to the Most High God. And they don't know you're doing it, but you're doing it. And when you call out to the Most High God around evil people, even if it's a whisper, they might think something's a little wrong with you because something's so right with you and something's so wrong with them. Okay, when something's so right with you and you're righteous, never underestimate the devil being used as a vessel to somebody to try to undermine God and mock you. See, when a lot of times when people are roasting you, bullying you, harassing you, uh, doing slander and ostracizing scarlet letters on you, a lot of times what they're really doing, it has nothing to do with you physically. They see the spirit of God in, in you, just like they did it towards Christ. And like Isaiah 53, 2 states, Christ was a man of long suffering because of his appearance. He had no majesty in his appearance that anybody would find him attractive or respected. So they mocked him because he was the son of God and they knew it, but they don't want you to know it. So y'all being the bloodlines of the son of God, y'all us being skin of furnish, bronze eyes of fire, of wool for even our own mock us. We got to remember even our own people helped uh, crucify the Messiah. They helped and assisted in it just like they helped and assisted with crucifying Malcolm X. They helped and assisted with crucifying Fred Hampton. They helped and assisted in crucifying uh, even somebody as worldly as Tupac Shakur. Okay? Even somebody as worldly as Nipsey. You got to look at these things historically. Any guy that had a black messianic energy, it, it was a combination between Esau and our own community setting them up. Ain't that some fucked up shit? So the Judas was a fellow Hebrew, right? Real talk. And the Roman was an Edomite, but it was a team. It was demonic teamwork. That's why when you get closer to God, you got to pay attention to the people, whether it's a man or abroad. When you and I don't mean when you when I say closer to God, I ain't talking about no fake church building, uh, synagogue of Satan type of way. I ain't talking about no TD Jakes type of shit. Like, oh, I go to church a thousand times a day and and uh, pray on Sundays and twerk for the Lord. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about when you really get closer to God personally, you got to watch people in your life. Who start to the people who start to all of a sudden wanting to hurt you, or mistreat you, or have an attitude with you, or and the people that you not don't know that ain't even in your circle, but that randomly give you attitude. Those are the people that are cursed, and I mean, excuse me, that are demonically possessed by Satan, and they deserve adversarial uh, prayer curses, right? What is an adversarial prayer curse? An imprecation prayer it was written about in the Bible, and they're perfectly legal, right? Because it's not threats or anything towards people. You just literally, like me, I actually have a cross. I have a giant cross I pull out all the time. Y'all know me, I'm not playing. I pull out a giant cross in society for real, all the time, right? And I keep it close in there. So me, I pull out my cross, my big cross, with the black Messiah on it, because I don't speak of lies, right? With Yahshua, and I say, Dear Heavenly Father God, deliver me from this evil in front of me, dear God. I feel the presence of wickedness, iniquity, and sickness upon them. Dear Heavenly Father God, Most High Yahuwah Barashem Yahushua, Yahweh Barashem Yahweh Shai, Eli Eli Adonai El Yeshua Tai El Shaddai, Barashem Hedemajiyak Yahushua Yahweh Shai, may you protect me from these, these evil spirits and may you curse and cast great judgments upon them and their life for their wickedness, iniquity, and hatred towards you, dear Heavenly Father, and the Black Messiah, your son, dear Heavenly Father, and for their wickedness and mocking of me because I am close to you, dear God. May you cause them great great judgments and may the, your wrath be heavy in their life dear heavenly father god in your name i pray amen 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 and then i put the cross away and keep it moving but i do pray you might say oh man that's mental illness that's insanity but isn't that i'll tell you what one thing that it that it does is it works because here's what it does to pray now it's not going up in nobody facing doing it i pray for myself right you got the right to publicly pray wherever, wherever you want right that's a civil right to pray. And, and you're talking to yourself. You're really talking to God. But it, demons have convinced people that you're mentally ill if you know God for real. Never forget that. The devil is tricky and sophisticated. 
The devil's not an idiot. The devil makes people think you're mentally ill if you even speak about God a lot. Okay? That's why they always say uh, religious zealots or um, if you look at like certain if you look at certain mental illnesses um, in a, in a DSM, it's very interesting that at the highest level of evil and dark principalities in society, these people who are seers and stuff and who use it for evil, they know. Like sorcerers, witchcraft people, and this and that, and gazillionaires in this world know the secret power of spirituality they don't want you to know, right? I just expose all of the spiritual truth and esoteric knowledge that I don't really supposed to expose to y'all. But I do that out of love, right? Um, for love for the community, right? For the true Yahudim, so of God and it's trickier than what it seems. It's the type of shit that'll give jeepers to creeps if you know how the spiritual world really works. So what you do, I mean what they do, they act like like they'll say some people who develop schizophrenia or schizotypal personality and they'll have religious, like overly religious um um obsessions and this and that. They'll say these things. If you read I read the DSM. I, I've read about all different types of mental health and this is that I studied these things in college. And I paid attention to a common trend. The quantum mechanics and metaphysics involved in spirituality is real, but in the mental health field, they try to act like it's not. Even though the people at the tippy top of society and dark principalities all utilize esoteric sorcery and witchcraft uh, historically, right? And categorically going all the way back to Christ's times, even, even before Christ, going all the way back to Horus, Hero, okay, Cleopatra, you know what I'm saying? Amen Ra, okay? Uh, uh, Hakin Tup. You can go back and back and back and back. Horace, Ronnie knows a lot of the history. I know the real black history, okay? And I know the real white history, too. The progenitor of the Edomite is Esau, right? That's where the Caucasians come from. But And they're great at sorcery. They're the greatest at They're like the greatest at sorcery ever, by the way. Okay? And, and you have to understand, anytime somebody's demonically possessed, no matter what race they're in, whether it's our own, and I like to warn y'all about that too. Our own people are demonically possessed and demonically charged too. Not just Esau and them, right? When they're demonically possessed, they'll do their best to destroy your confidence and your self-esteem. Your confidence and self-esteem is really deep because it's the thing that can get you so depressed that you contemplate self-deleting and you don't ever want to do that. You don't never want to contemplate hating yourself, okay? You don't, don't hate yourself because people play with your self-esteem. You have to always do things to get flyer. That's why I tell y'all to lift weights. Or I make suggestions. I don't tell nobody what to do because I don't want nobody saying, oh, you too. I don't tell my audience or none what to do. I just give you examples of how I keep myself on point. You know what I'm saying? The best I can, right? You want to elevate and amplify your genetic strengths. You want to minimize your genetic weaknesses. You want to pray at least 10 times a day if you can, including adversarial prayers and imprecation curse prayers. That's actually important to God. If you really if you read the Bible for real, it is important to God. God said, vengeance is not yours, it's the Lord's. Peace be still, my son. I make thy enemy thy footstool. Right? He said it all throughout the Bible. People don't pay attention to that because the fake synagogue of Satan type of churches teach you to never pray bad for anybody. Never pray bad or pray for the downfall of evil. That's because they know your prayers are metaphysical and quantum. And they actually, you can pray accidentally and uplift evil. And that's what the energy harvesting uh, be going on with a lot of celebrities when they randomly ask for your prayers and you don't know what's wrong with them. Like what happened with Jamie Foxx a couple months ago. What the fuck was that about? Nobody knows what was wrong with them. But all we know is people were saying there's replicas and all kind of shit allegedly, mysteriously. But then at the same time, it, they kept saying pray for Jamie. Energy harvesting, getting our prayers because they know that they're metaphysical and quantum mechanics. Me excuse me, quantum mechanical. They know that we all have our personalized um, inverse matrices in this world Every Everything in this world is an algorithm And now the external Technological algorithm Of the metaverse Which is a meta matrix attempt At replicating the multiplex matrix That God has See we live in a multiverse of parallel universes But they But, but Esau has created uh, A technological mechanical metaverse Within God's multiverse To try to be like God but they know the power of, of your prayers. That's why they always distract you from praying. They rather brothers be talking that ignorant shit, that wicked shit, that, that self-destructive uh, in the community type shit, and all of that, allegedly. It seems like, right, ain't that, ain't that how everything is presented to us as a self-destructive mechanism of reprobate activity? 
And our people are so silly. They blindly love ignorance. I was just seeing a, a clip of, um, and I say that out of love. Love is discerning. Love is concerning and discerning, right? That's why I'm telling you, brothers, too, stop dating, mating, appropriating with people who hate you, whoever they may be. Only you would know who hates you if you were able to read hate properly. See, I like to be able to read hate very well. Hate is, is a sneaky and sophisticated. It can mask itself as friendship, like not saying your, all your friends hate you or nothing like that, but it can mask itself as friendship like Judas with Jesus, right? Uh, or Judas with who y'all ignorantly call Jesus. It can mask itself um, as as like tricky, crafty, um, not calling at all, but sometimes people who want to collaborate and work with you so bad with different things, it can mask itself as um as certain types of entity, certain types of energy. It can mask itself as just a typical regular degular neighbor type of person. It, evils can come through people and the devil can use people as a vessel. It can even mask itself as a particular a, a, a false love interest just so it can get close to you and, and, and do wickedness and sorcery to you. And y'all think I'm playing don't make me play that video clip again for the gazillion time of um matter of fact let me play that let me just go ahead and play it one second because a lot of y'all don't believe it that 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 this stuff is real y'all a lot of y'all think it's comedy or bullshit until it happens to you the curses of the reptilian Jeze jezebelian creature uh species right the uh, the sorcery and the witchcraft that can be used on you okay by allowing certain people to get too close to you right but certain telltale signs is people who have to try to undermine your self-esteem and your confidence. Remember, everything is trickier and creepier than what it seems. The spiritual realm is, is freakier than a horror film, okay? Remember this. Never forget this one. Wait, hold on. Let me get y'all. Never forget this one. This is... A, this is an example of what I'm talking about. Perfect example. The best example. This is what a lot of y'all are interacting with and don't know it. Some of y'all got babies by this. They're very difficult to get over on. So I got myself a succubus, right? Because I can actually feed off you guys. We can all do it, by the way. Just, I know how. Anybody can do it. And the hardest people who often end up the best ones to feed off of energetic wise are the good, strong men. They also have the best quality seen in them. The good, strong, it's not men, the spirit and everything. Um, them, them super, they don't have to be Christian, but them super like spiritual men. Yeah. Message. And they're, and the good ones. And it's like, cool. But it's like they got this sick fucking sense about them that they can sense yes, what do. I'm about to do. message and so fellas that's what i'm trying to explain to y'all you got to be the type of brother she's talking about where you're too smart to do what she wants you to do you have to understand that the devil is using females like that as a vessel to do his bidding that's why you should never deal with the type of bitch that's trying to change you into something else or trying to destroy your self-esteem and confidence as a punishment for you not doing what she tell you to do because she's trying to play your god her competition in life believe it or not the way she sees it it's like Mother Nature versus Father Time, which is Father God. It's deep. Don't let that go over your head. Real talk. Or under your knees. That's deep. Because it'll drop you to your knees. She's trying to compete with God for your energy and fellowship. And when I say she, I ain't talking about just her. I'm talking about that type of creature. It's a specific type uh, that a lot of y'all be obsessed with trying to, you know, pipe down, which is a sexual term, right? Not, to, not nothing violent. You gotta be very clarified on on this platform, and because purposeful misinterpretation demons exist, right? Uh, but what you have to be is the type of person 
in your life like this right here. Fair usage. And then I'm going to get going. Bingo. Fair usage. That's a spiritual word. Careful how you treat people, man. You know what I'm saying? See, there's certain people that God don't play about. I happen to be one of them people. Me too. You know what I'm saying? Careful how you treat people, man. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, Touch not my anointing and do my prophecy. Go on, man. No, no, man. You don't know who God got on the side. You know what I'm saying? And if God put them on the side, that there's nothing you can do. You can't come with your hate. You can't come with your negativity. You can't come with your bad words. None of that. Nothing you go, nothing you're going to try to do to harm them or stop them from fulfilling what God got for them is going to prosper. That's what that scripture means. Praise God. The form against them shall prosper. And every tongue that it chooses them in judgment shall be condemned. See, a lot of y'all be putting your mouth on people and don't even realize this is God's anointing. That's why the moment you say something bad, the moment you try to come against them, all oh, hell break, break through your life. life. Amen. You know, and this is why we trying to tell, this is why we give a fair warning about, um, like even with our community of women, with how they mock and slander and defame the character of black men, they don't realize they're doing that to Christ as well. The one with skin and furnished bronze eyes of fire of water. Message, that's us. They are, we're his bloodline, so we're the anointed ones. And the people, dark principalities know who God's, who God's bloodline, who Christ's bloodline is, period. But our sisters, they don't understand that it's a curse and a condemnation that God, a judgment that God will put on them in their life just for disrespecting black men in general. For real, I'm not even joking. There's curses that come with that. Others know it. That's why you think we're so hated as, as a people, as a, as a group of men. That's not about coinky dink, bro. That ain't no fucking coincidence. Ain't no fucking coinky dinks. None, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Everything is divine order and divine timing, bro. So these sisters need to get it in order before God does that for them. And brothers need to stay away from the type of so-called sisters who not are who is not actually our uh, sisters at all, if you understand how devils how the devil will be using them as a vessel to hate us and to break our self-esteem and confidence, right? What's the difference between them and what Willie Lynch them used to do on the plantations, bidding us against each other in, in auctions and and talking shit about us and calling us monkeys and you know what I'm saying and, and, and anything but a son of God, knowing where the ge ancient genetic Hebrews uh, that the Bible speaks of, right? But we also, as Hebrews, were cast into hell temporarily, not permanently, unless we were to make it that. So right now we're living in hell, and our goal is to pray our way out of hell and elevate, pray and fast and meditate. And levitate out of the hell that we live in to transcend spiritually uh, by l being in the world, but not of the world. OK, spiritually leaving the world behind and physically being disciplined to, to mind our business and stay away from ignorance. That's the best way I can say it. That's a gorilla biscuit. And on that note, have a moment of silence for that runny two ism truth. And don't know, don't know, don't know, not donut, but don't know which is donate and salute. And thank you to those who did donate, whether it was a dollar, a penny, uh, five cent, five dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, super salute to you. And always super salute to the secret angel, brother RB. Moment of, but for this truth I'm speaking, another moment of silence. And then kiss your two arms. If you work out enough to have them, your divine masculinity intact, salute.